See Mommy Cry Michael J. Moore Part 1 Are you off work yet? Daniel Porter looks at his phone, thinks about how to respond to the text. Yeah. Why? He presses send, stuffing it into his pocket. He walks away from Pure H2O, where he's just spent the last eight hours on an assembly line. His breath turns to fog, expanding like a balloon as it floats away. Burlington, Washington isn't a large town, and the back roads are always dark in the evenings. In the distance, crickets chirp. Somewhere near the road, something scurries in the bushes. The phone vibrates against his leg, and he stops, tenses. It's moments like these that make him wish he had gone to college. No 34-year-old man should know how much he hates walking alone at night, because he should be able to afford a car. Bringing the phone out, he looks at the screen. Message from Kayla. He selects it. I was just seeing if you wanted to come over and have a drink. His heartbeat picks up as he types, I don't know where you are, and then resumes walking. The phone vibrates in less than a minute. I'm at my house, screwball. I figured that. I don't know where you live. Before he finishes, it vibrates again. Where else would I be at 11? Then again, LOL. His thumb hovers over the keypad for a moment as he contemplates a response. He saved the trouble, though. You don't have a car anyway. How do you know that? He finally types, making it to the main road where streetlights illuminate the night and turning left toward his apartment. It would be at least 45 minutes from here. The reply comes fast. You told me, stupid. Had he? He reflects on every text and email he sent in the past week. Oh, yeah. He presses send. She was a friend of a friend, and he had seen her profile on his wall a few times before she actually sent him a request. It had never been easy to approach, or even talk to women, and having a head of hair that turned prematurely salt and pepper, and no real career, or vehicle, hadn't helped. So, accepting it, had been as thoughtless as yawning in the morning. She messaged him right away, asking if they knew each other. They didn't. Then, they just kept talking most of that first night. The next day, she sent him her number and they text all evening. Last night had been their first call, but it had lasted hours. His cell buzzes again, picture from Kayla. He selects to view it and stops walking when it pops up. The lighting in the room is poor, but he imagines that's by design. The camera is held somewhere near her point of vision, aimed down her body as she lays on her back. It's like seeing her through her own eyes. She's naked. He feels himself being backed into a corner coming face to face with something that, for reasons he doesn't fully understand, scare the hell out of him most of the time. His sex drive. All the reasons that he's been talking to Kayla Jennings for the last week pour out of his subconscious and surface as his manhood begins to press against the inside of his pants. It's been over a year since his most recent breakup, and even longer since he's been intimate with anybody but himself.